most welcome to the seventh lecture of my series on visual complex analysis. In this video, I will discuss the concept of limit and continuity for a function of one complex variable. As a prerequisite, I would require a basic understanding about the geometry of a function of two real variables. If you have not watched my video on the concept of limit for a function of two real variables, I would recommend you to watch that before you start watching this. The link of that video is in the description below. So now, in argon plane or in complex plane, if we write limit z tends to z0 if z is equal to L, let us first see what that means in terms of definition. What is the definition of this? Then I will explain that through uh, 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 geometry. I'll geometrically explain that. Now this means, this expression means for every epsilon for any positive for any positive number epsilon epsilon is just a notation i'm denoting this positive number by epsilon as per convention you can use any other notation if you wish the convention is we use epsilon that's why this definition is known as epsilon delta definition for any positive number epsilon uh, however small means epsilon can be smaller than the smallest that you can think. So for any positive number epsilon, there exist, there exist a positive, there exist a positive number delta usually Delta depends on epsilon, usually depends on epsilon such that such that mod of if z minus l less than epsilon whenever mod of z minus z0 less than delta. So, this is the formal epsilon delta definition. We call it as the epsilon delta definition. We call it as the epsilon delta definition of limit here of a function of one complex variable. So, for any positive number epsilon, however small, there exists, there exists a positive, there exists a positive number delta usually depends on epsilon such that mod of fz minus l less than epsilon whenever mod of z minus z0 less than delta. Now, let us see what this means or geometrically how we can interpret this definition. Don't get scared about the symbols epsilon and delta. I mean, I have seen uh, people usually get scared by looking at this kind of mathematical expressions, but these are very simple expressions once you decode this thing geometrically. Uh, so let us do that. Let us suppose here uh, z is a complex variable. So so let 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 z is z is represented as x plus i y. And Z0 is a fixed complex number in argon plane. So Z0 is equal to say X0 plus I Y0. That means Z is equal to X plus I Y. Actually a complex number can be denoted as ordered pair or equivalently can be written in this way. I have told you this at, the, at, at, at my first uh, or second lecture. And this means uh, Z0, uh, Z0 is alternatively this means this is my z0, which is also an ordered pair x0, y0, or can be equivalently defined in this way. So, this is my uh, z0, z and z0. 
Now, can you tell me if this is my z and z0, what will be mod of z minus z0 less than delta? Therefore, I can write, therefore, mod of z minus z0 less than delta implies mod of, so this x plus iy minus x0 plus iy0, that means if I separate the real and imaginary parts, this will be x minus x0 plus i into y minus y0 less than delta. Now, can you tell me uh, what is what is mod of this, this expression? Pretty simple, this will be, yes, absolutely correct. This implies x minus x0 whole square plus y minus y0 whole square less than delta square. Can you tell me geometrically what this, what this, inequality represents geometrically what this inequality represents absolutely correct this represents an open circular disk centered at x0 y0 and radius delta so that will look something like this this so uh, the inequality represent an open circular disk like this centered at x0, y0 and radius delta. So, xy, xy actually is any point lying in this open circular disk. Say my xy may be some point lying at this place or maybe uh, somewhere else, anywhere in this open circular disk. Or I can say that uh, this xy is belonging to this open circular disk. Or uh, so uh, 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 this x y means actually my my variable point z. If I consider argon plane, so in argon plane this is my variable point z, and this is my fixed point z zero. So this. Uh, so this is the scenario which is described by this inequality. Now can you tell me if delta becomes very very small? If delta is very small, very, very small, maybe, uh, maybe means uh, maybe very close to zero or maybe uh, smaller than the smallest that you can think, but not zero, but not zero. So when delta becomes very, very small, uh, then can you tell me uh, uh, what will happen to this region and what, what will happen uh, to this circular disk and Z and Z0, what will happen or what will be uh, 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 happening in between them if delta is very, very small. Absolutely correct. When delta is very, very small, Z and Z0 will come much closer because my region will become very smaller. Means this open circular disk, if the radius becomes smaller, the open circular disk will squeeze and as a result, this Z and Z0 will come much closer, very, very close to each other. So, uh, uh, the point is, whenever you choose a small delta, you are actually making z and z0 very close. And whenever we say mod of z minus z0 less than delta, that means for small delta, we are saying nothing but z and z0 are very, very close. Now, remember, uh, this z can approach to z0. This variable point z can approach to the fixed point z0 by any path means the approach path can be anything. The approach path can be something like this. 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 The approach path can be a straight line. But remember, when your delta becomes smaller, when your region, when this open circular disk becomes smaller and whenever x, y or z and z0 both lying in this open circular disk. So, whatever be your approach path, whenever I say this condition mod of z minus z0 less than delta, that means z and z0 come, come close to each other. So, that is the point. Means uh, uh, whatever be the approach path, z and z0 have come close to each other if delta is very very small so that is that is whatever is stated in this particular inequality mod of z minus z0 less than delta now here uh, let me tell you i hope you have seen my previous video on functions of uh, uh, two real variables on the concept of function of two real variables 
that why we need to consider a, a multiple approach paths which may be non-linear also means for a function of one real variable there are only two approach paths either from the uh, from the left hand side or from the right hand side and both are linear segment of the real line but here since my domain is planar my approach path can be anything i discussed this thing in detail in in my video uh, 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 about the concept of limit for a function of two real variables the link of that video again is i'm saying is given in the description below and you can see above also so i hope uh, you will see uh, uh, that video for better understanding about the geometry in 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 in, in this kind of a planar region so anyway uh, so this is this is what is the meaning of mod of z minus z0 less than delta now let us see what is the meaning of mod of fz minus l less than epsilon now likewise the previous case Likewise, the previous case, fz is also uh, fz will also lie in the argon plane. So this will uh, uh, have some uh, some uh, some say representation say u plus iv. Actually, u means I should I should specifically write uxy plus ivxy, uxy plus ivxy uh, because uh, if z is a if, if z is an ordered pair of two real variables x, y, then I have discussed in my video of functions of complex variable how fz will look like. fz can also be represented as uxy plus ivxy. I hope you have seen that video also. So this is my fz and say l is u0 plus iv0. So just like the previous calculation, what we have done if we consider mod of fz minus l less than epsilon mod of fz minus l less than epsilon uh, then uh, clearly that will imply in a similar way u minus u0 plus i into sorry uh, plus uh, i am i am i am directly writing the result instead of instead of writing mod and all those things because i hope you can understand so this will be u minus u0 whole square plus v minus v0 whole square less than epsilon square less than epsilon square so this now can you tell me what is represented by this inequality like the previous case uh, this particular inequality represents again an open circular disk centered at u0 v0 means centered at l and radius epsilon so this will look something like this something like this open uh, uh, circular disk uh, with centered at l and radius and radius epsilon and radius epsilon and this uh, uv that means fz ordered pair uv means fz and this uv uv will lie somewhere inside this open circular disk so so say this uh, my uv may lie in this place maybe i'm roughly uh, estimating everything for the sake of uh, discussion and actually what will happen how how the plots will look like that depend on the specific function given so let us uh, uh, suppose that uh, uh, uv here uh, is lying here that means fz uv is actually fz yes i told you that an ordered pair uh, either you can represent a complex number in terms of ordered pair or or in terms of this u plus iv notation so uh, this is my uv so then uh, what this inequality says this inequality says likewise the previous case if you reduce epsilon or if you choose a very very small value for epsilon if you choose a very very small value for epsilon say smaller than the smallest that you can think then what will happen then in a similar way like what happened in the previous case in z plane in a similar way this fz and l will come very very close so for existence of limit what we wish we wish that whenever in my if i call this plane as my w plane or my my co-domain plane uh, where wherever fz and l lies if i call this as my w plane 
say I'm calling this as my W plane and I'm calling this as my say Z plane, the domain plane. So whenever in domain plane, this Z and Z0 comes closure. If we see in W plane, if Z and L comes closure, we say that the limit exists. The basic understanding is that whenever in my domain plane, Z and Z0 comes closure, in my W plane, if, if Z and L comes closure, then we say that the limit exists. And that is whatever is written above. It is written that mod of Fz minus L less than epsilon. Now, what is epsilon? Epsilon is a positive number. It is written however small. Means you can make it uh, arbitrarily smaller as you wish. So, whenever this Fz and L comes closure, because this inequality represent mod of Fz minus L less than epsilon represent that Fz and L are coming very, very closure. So, if Z minus L comes very, very closure, very, very close to each other, whenever Z and Z0 comes very, very close to each other. That means whenever we say Z approaches arbitrarily close to Z0 by whatever path it may be, if Z and L will come very, very close to each other or whenever Z approach to Z0 by whatever path it may be, if Z will approach to L. Whenever Z approaches to Z0 by whatever path it may be, if Z will approach to L. So that is what is meant in this particular definition. So if we have to uh, prove somewhere that the limit exists, that this kind of a thing, whatever I wrote earlier, that limit, if I have to, if I have to prove somewhere that limit Z tends to Z0 if Z is equal to L. If we have to prove this, so what we have to actually show? As per our geometric understanding, we have to show that whenever Z and Z0 comes close to each other, arbitrarily close to each other, if Z and L comes arbitrarily close to each other. So how to show that? That means we have to show that whenever I choose whatever epsilon I choose, Whatever epsilon I choose, I will get a suitable delta that whenever my epsilon is very, very small, delta is also very, very small. Whenever my epsilon is very, very small, delta is also very, very small. That means we need to find out a relationship between epsilon and delta so that whenever the open circular disk in the right hand side, in the right hand side, get squeezed automatically. In the left hand side, your open circular uh, uh, disk gets squeezed. So whenever the right hand open circular disk gets squeezed, that means whenever delta gets reduced, your uh, 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 open circular disk in the left hand side automatically gets squeezed. That means epsilon get gets reduced. That means what do we need to find out? We need to find out the relationship between delta and epsilon. That means we need to find out what is delta epsilon, means delta depending on epsilon. Means we need to express delta as a function of epsilon and uh, it should be directly proportional. Delta and epsilon should be directly proportional so that whenever you, you reduce delta, epsilon automatically gets reduced. That's why I have written here in the definition that Delta usually depends on epsilon. See, that's why this part is written here. Usually depends on epsilon. Because then this will happen and the relation should be a direct proportionality. So this is, uh, this is the formal definition of, 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 of the meaning of this kind of an expression. Limit z tends to z0 if z equals to l. So if we have to show it, if we have to show that, for some function fz as z approaches to z0 uh, the limit uh, the limiting value approaches to l then actually our task is we need to find out this delta uh, as a function of epsilon so that we can clearly see that uh, for a particular epsilon whatever is whatever small it is what will be delta means whenever i get a very small uh, a very small open circular disk in w plane 
I can say or say what will be the corresponding open circular disk in Z plane. So this and remember one thing that for existence of limit, for existence of limit, unlike the case of function of one real variable where a point can approach to another point only from two directions. Here since a point, a variable point z can approach to a fixed point z0 using any path means from any direction rather there will be infinite number of approach paths testing the equality for any two paths or any finite number of paths will not prove the existence of limit because it may happen that from uh, that that through whatever paths you approach paths for whatever approach paths you have tested the limiting value they may be equal but for some other path there might be uh, uh, some value which is not equal to the earlier values so earlier value so uh, the point is uh, uh, testing the existence of limit likewise the previous case where we tested left hand limit and right hand limit will not be applicable here which i discussed on my video of uh, of functions of two variables limits of functions of two variables also so uh, you can refer that so anyway uh, this uh, this is the definition this is what the definition means now let us solve a problem let us see how we can solve a problem using this definition let us consider a very simple problem uh, this one prove that limit z tends to i z square is equals to minus 1. That means z square will approach to minus 1 as z tends to i. Fine. Uh, let us uh, let us do one thing. Let us first try to visualize uh, 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 something geometrically. Then I will use this, uh, this, this definition and I will tell you why this definition will be required. I have chosen intentionally a simple problem so that we can understand the scenario completely. So let us let us let us uh, 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 consider uh, it geometrically first. Some aspect of geometry let us consider first. Okay, I'll explain you uh, shortly why I have taken these three unit circles in argon planes. Shortly I'll explain. Now let us consider this first diagram. Uh, Z approaches to I. Now we know that I will be this point if this is my unit circle. So this point will be my i. So this is my unit circle. So this is my 1, comma 0. And this point is my i. i is this point. So this means that z approaches to i. Now remember, z can approach to i uh, uh, from anywhere and via any path. Means z can be at this position. z can be at this position. Z can be at this position. Z can be on the circumference of this unit circle. Means Z can be at this place. Z can be at this place. Z can be at this place. Or Z can be inside also. Or Z can be here also. Anywhere. So if we have to prove the existence of limit. That means we need to show that wherever Z is. And by whatever path it, it approaches to. Uh, uh, to i the limiting value or the functional value in w plane will should approach to minus 1 so that means it is irrespective that my approach path can be like this my approach path can be like this my approach path can be this my approach path can be this being on the circumference of the circle my approach path can be this my approach path can be this, my approach path can be this, whatever be the approach path. In this way, I can figure out infinite number of approach paths and through every path, my, my, uh, uh, my uh, 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 functional, whatever be the path through which Z approaches to, uh, uh, to I, to this fixed point. But remember, Z can never be equal to I. That means, probably I forgot to write one thing here that uh, yes, this will be 0 less than this. 0 less than mod of z minus z0. So, this is, so that means z is not equals to z0. So, that we have to remember. That z can never be equal to z0. Anyway, 
so so anyway so this so this z can never be equal to z0 that means uh, we actually this the circular disks are such that the center is not here means uh, uh, the center is excluded from this open circular disk in both the uh, means in this place in this z plane the center is excluded so anyway, uh, if we concentrate on this problem, so the thing is that whatever through whatever path z approaches to i, the functional value should approach, should always approach to minus 1. Uh, let us see, let us see what happens, what happens when my z approach, my z approaches to i being on the circumference of this uh, unit circle. For example, say, for example, say uh, this is my i, this is my i. So, every point on this circle, since this is an unit circle, means the radius is 1. So, uh, we can write this circle as z equals to e to the power i theta. So, suppose this is my z plane and suppose that this is my w plane for f z is equals to z square. So, since my z is equal to e to the power i theta that is an unit circle z square will be what? z square will be e to the power i into 2 theta. So, fine. So, that means that means let if we if we if we consider if we consider that my variable point is at this place is at this place at an angle at an argument theta where the argument is theta can you tell me in w plane what will be the image remember i have a theta here and i have a 2 theta here so in the image plane or in the co-domain plane or in w plane uh, the image of this pink point will be the image of this pink point will be the angle will be doubled so the image will be something like this sorry uh, so the image will be something like this now suppose the point approaches towards this i this point is my i so the point is approaches towards this i so whenever this pink dot or pink point will come at this particular place when the, where the image will move again the angle will be doubled so the image will move to some place like this now again when this pink point comes to this particular place the image will come somewhere like this and when this pink point come very close to this eye this image will also come very close to this this particular this particular say if i mark it by green say this particular green point okay so whenever my approach path whenever my approach path is like this something like this being on the circumference of the circle here i can see the image in w plane if z is approaching in this way now let us see if my variable point moves in this particular uh, uh, variable points is at this point so that means if i consider if i consider this that means now my angle is this one so where the image will be at a double uh, angle like this so the image will come will be somewhere like this maybe somewhere like this roughly a, a rough estimate somewhere like this now whenever the point moves to this place the image will move to double angle so that means because it is two theta argument will get doubled so uh, uh, this place whenever the variable point moves z moves to this place if z will move to this place Whenever z comes much closer to this yellow point, if z will come much closer to this green point, that means if you consider that this is your approach path for z towards i, so we can see that in this image plane or in this w plane, if z is moving around in this way towards this green point, now what is the green point? At this green point, what is at the value of fz so clearly at this green point means this green point means my fz is equal to minus 1 
That means my z square is equal to minus 1. This green point corresponds to minus 1. So, uh, this, uh, this phenomena, this dynamics tell us that whenever z approaches to i, if z approaches to minus 1, remember here z is neither equal to i and if z is not actually uh, equal to minus 1, mm, uh, means, means if z is not equal to uh, 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 minus 1. So, uh, that is, this, is, this is a wrong way of stating the thing. This point is minus 1. This point is minus 1. This point is minus 1. Because this, uh, uh, in terms of ordered pair, this is minus 1, 0. So, this is minus 1. Anyway, if z is not minus 1. So, whenever, whenever z approaches to i, so that means, z, whenever z approaches to i, the functional values of uh, uh, fz for all those z's will approach to minus 1. Can we say on the basis of this that on the basis of that, that uh, this that limit z tends to i z square equal to minus 1? Absolutely not. Because these two paths that we have seen are this one and this one. That means only two of all the infinite number of paths possible. What about the others? What is the guarantee that whenever z approaches to i via some other paths, or if my variable point lies somewhere else, then also the functional value will approach to uh, minus 1. We have tested this only for two paths, but there are infinite number of approach paths possible. For this reason, on the basis of this, we cannot conclude uh, that my limit is minus 1 or we cannot say that the thing is proved. This can give us an intuition that the limit can be minus 1, but we cannot prove it in this way because we need to consider all the infinite number of paths possible. That's why proving this cannot be done by choosing uh, a, a specific paths or by showing some examples geometrically. If we had to prove the existence of limit, we need to prove it in a generic way by validating the definition. So let us do that. Let us validate the definition. The definition means we have to show that this fz minus l less than epsilon whenever 0 less than mod of z minus z0 less than delta. And we need to find out what is the relationship between delta and epsilon in such a case. Okay, fine. Let us do that. Let us do that. So, uh, here for this particular problem, this is my fz. Remember? As per our definition, this is my L and this is my Z0. And we need to show mod of Fz minus L less than epsilon whenever, whenever mod of Z minus Z0 less than delta. And we need to show what is, sorry, 0 less than mod of Z minus Z0 less than delta because Z cannot be equal to Z0. Fine. So, uh, so, so let us see, let us see, uh, 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 let us see what, what, what happens here. Uh, so, a mod of fz minus l, that means mod of fz minus l means here mod of z square plus 1. Uh, so, let us investigate that one. Now, mod of z square plus 1, mod of z square plus 1, mod of z square plus 1 is equal to, I can write this as mod of z minus i into z plus i. Can I write this in this way? Fine. So, this can be write it, written in this way. Now, if, if we choose, if we choose that, if we choose that, say my delta is less or equal to 1, because delta is a very small number. So, I am choosing it, uh, it to be less or equal to 1, because if delta is big and epsilon is big, there is no point in saying that uh, fz and l are very very close or z and z0 are very very close. So, you need to concentrate about those epsilon and delta which are very very small. So, considering that I am choosing delta is less or equal to 1. Then, then uh, uh, this mod of z minus i less than delta implies because remember uh, this can be written as mod of z minus i into mod of z plus i. 
So this implies mod of z minus i less than delta implies uh, uh, implies mod of z square plus one. If I plug in this inequality in the above line, so we will get mod of z square plus one less than delta into mod of z plus i. Simple calculation. Uh, this will be again. This will be again. I can manipulate this as equal to delta into say I'm manipulating this term as z minus i plus 2i. I'm manipulating this term in this way. Now this can be again written as this can be again written as less than delta into I'm using the inequality that mod of a plus b is less or equal to mod a plus mod b. So if I use that inequality I can write this is less than mod of z minus i plus plus mod of twice i. Can you tell me what will be the value of mod twice i? Exactly. Mod twice i is just 2. And can you tell me what will be, uh, what we can say about mod z minus i? Now this mod z minus i is less than delta. And this delta is again less or equal to 1. So if I plug in here less or equal to 1, so I can write that this particular expression is less than or equal to, is less than or equal to delta into 1 plus 2. That means this particular expression is less than equal to delta into 1 plus 2, that is equal to 3 delta. Now remember, in the hierarchy of all such, all such, uh, 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 all such comparisons, whichever all such comparisons and inequalities, whichever is the stronger inequality that preserves, that is getting preserved. Therefore, what we have got, therefore we have got that, therefore we have got that mod of z square plus one. This can be written again as minus of minus one. Is less than 3 delta whenever whenever mod of z minus i is less than delta whenever mod of z minus i is less than delta or or i can say i can say 0 less than mod of z minus i less than delta uh, uh, now what do we need? We have got some, some, uh, 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 somewhat what we 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 were uh, seeking. We got that probably. Now we were seeking an expression like this. We are seeking an expression like this, where if I compare, this is my f z, this is my l, this is my z, this is my z zero. So I have got here f z minus l, z minus z zero. Now I need to say find out what is epsilon and what is delta. Can you tell me? Absolutely correct. Let us choose, let us choose whatever be the delta, sorry, whatever be the epsilon, whatever be the epsilon. That means if we choose for, for every epsilon, for every epsilon, let delta be equal to epsilon Okay, okay, fine. Because uh, I, I have chosen delta is less or equal to 1. Let us choose delta equal to minimum of 1 and uh, epsilon by 3. Whatever be the minimum, let us choose that. Delta equal to minimum of 1 and epsilon by 3. If we choose for every epsilon, if I choose delta in that way, then what we can write? Then we can write that mod of z square minus of minus 1 less than what? What? If for this choice, absolutely correct, less than epsilon whenever, whenever 0 less than mod of z minus i less than delta. So, we got exactly whatever was required that means we got that this is my fz mod of fz minus l less than 
epsilon whenever 0 less than mod of z minus z0 because in this problem i is z0 less than delta and we have shown that and we have shown that this delta is equals to this delta is equals to minimum of 1 and epsilon by 3. So, if you give me, so now that means if you give me any epsilon, I can tell you what is the delta that should be chosen. That means if you give me any epsilon in this diagram, if you give me any epsilon so that uh, uh, Fz and L are lying in this kind of an open circular disk of radius that epsilon, I will tell you what will be the radius of that open circular disk where both z and z0 will lie. So this, so if you give me any epsilon, for every epsilon, I will be able to tell you what will be that open circular disk or what will be the radius of that open circular disk and how this phenomena will look like that your z and z0 will lie in that open circular disk. Uh, 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 and Fz and L is lying in that open circular disk of radius epsilon. So, we have got everything and eventually, and eventually whatever path you choose, and eventually whatever path you choose, suddenly, eventually whatever path you choose, that will lie on this open circular disk because every path, whenever I am saying my variable point, whenever my I am saying that my variable point and my uh, uh, my fixed point both are lying inside that open circular disk so automatically all the paths will lie inside that open circular disk so automatically when the circular disk you, you will choose to be small uh, 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 your z and z0 will be small and all the paths will lie inside them so there is no point uh, of saying that i have not considered that path or this path i have not taken into consideration all the infinite number of paths. There is no point in saying that. All the infinite number of paths are automatically considered because all such paths are lying in that open circular disk. So that is how we can prove the existence of limit in a generic way. So whenever you have to prove the existence, don't prove by choosing some specific example, prove by choosing specific uh, 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 prove by prove by validating the definition. So that means the definition is validated, and therefore we can say that limit z tends to i z square is equal to is equal to uh, minus one. Now we can say on the basis of this definition. So now I told you that. Uh, you cannot prove the existence of limit by choosing any specific path. But let me tell you one thing comes out of this. I have said whatever be the approach path, whatever be the approach path in the domain plane, in Z plane, or through whatever path Z approach to Z0, if Z should approach to the same value, that means it tells us that if we get any two specific path, if we get any two specific path where through which when Z approaches to Z0, if Z approaches to two different values, what that will imply? I am reframing the question again. If I get two specific path via which when Z approach to Z0, in the codomain plane, if z approaches for the two paths to two different values, what that will imply? Absolutely correct. That implies that the limit does not exist. So to prove existence, we need to validate the definition. But if we have to show that the limit does not exist, our task is much simpler. Pick up any two paths and show that those two paths lead to two different values uh, 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 two different values uh, uh, for fz and that will prove that uh, uh, the limit does not exist. Let us uh, uh, see an example. Okay. okay. The problem is prove that limit z tends to 0 uh, z bar that means the conjugate of z divided by z does not exist. So let us solve it. It is a very simple problem. Uh, if the limit is to exist 
it must be independent of the manner in which z approaches to the point 0. Uh, let z tends to 0, let, let z tends to 0, let z tends to 0 along, uh, along say, along the x-axis, along the x-axis, along the x-axis. Let z tends to 0 along the x-axis. Uh, now, since it is approaching to 0 along x-axis, we can say, therefore, y, then y will be equal to what? y is 0 because along x-axis y is 0 means if I represent, if I represent say z by, if I represent z as say, if I represent z as say x plus i y, we know that z bar will be equal to x minus i y. Can you tell me then y equals to 0? Therefore, can you tell me what will be this limit? Then the limit will become, then the limit will become, the required limit will become limit x tends to 0 because y has become already 0. So, z tends to 0 means x tends to 0 because z is equal to x plus i y, y is 0. So, z tends to 0 means x tends to 0. Limit x tends to 0. Uh, z bar, y is 0. Z bar means z bar means x and z that is also x. So, the value of the limit is 1. So, when z tends to 0 along the x axis, uh, the, the record limit is 1. Now, let z tends to 0 along the y axis. y axis means uh, then we can say then x equals to 0 and the required limit will be what? Can you tell me? Will be limit y tends to 0 will be limit y tends to 0 will be limit y tends to 0 uh, x equal to 0 that means this will be minus i y divided by uh, i y. So, what will be the value? The value will be minus 1. So, you can see that when when z tends to 0 when z tends to 0 along the x axis your limit means your function approach if here here this is my function fz here this is my function fz so when z tends to 0 along the x axis if z approaches to 1 and when z tends to 0 along the y axis our fz approaches to minus 1 so uh, what i got two two approach paths for which the functional value approaches to two different values since the two approach do not give the same answer we can say that the limit does not exist so i will simply write therefore limit z tends to 0 z bar by z does not exist does not exist so it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty simple uh, simple problem so it's a pretty simple problem and simple observation which explains the entire scenario so that means what we have learned we have learned that whenever we have to prove the existence of limit we have to prove in a generic way uh, using the epsilon delta definition any two space equality in any two specific paths or any finite number of specific paths cannot uh, be enough to prove existence that can build an intuition that what can be the limit but will not be enough for proving the existence so for existence we have to use that epsilon delta definition and for non existence we can give counter examples so this is uh, what we have learned today and and actually uh, above all this epsilon delta definition is nothing but this says when your variable point and the fixed point are close very very close in the in the in the z plane or in the domain plane the functional value and the, the and the limiting value are also very very close in the w plane that is what is uh, what is what is said uh, by this epsilon delta definition so uh, so that's it uh, that's it for this video uh, see you in the next video take care